wonderful to see you this morning. Welcome to the house of Jesus. Uh, the Lord Jesus has invited you and me here by the power of his Holy Spirit. And he's invited us here so that we can connect with him and also with one another. It's a beautiful thing that as we connect with the Lord Jesus, he also invites us to connect with our brothers and sisters in worship and also with our brothers and sisters all over the world. It feels good to be connected that way, doesn't it? Um, welcome. Uh, do we have anybody that's visiting with us today? Anybody? Oh, good. Glad you're here. Well, you have hit the jackpot. Okay. This is the jackpot for Visitor Sunday because... Today is our Consecration Sunday. Now, Consecration Sunday is uh, a wonderful thing. It's a Sunday where at the close of the worship service, our people will have an opportunity to write down what they plan to give to God's work through Duck Church in 2017. And then afterward, we're all going to the fellowship hall for a really wonderful brunch. And everybody is invited. So. When the worship service is over, just go through that door there, or go through that door and go around the deck, and uh, we're going to have a great fellowship meal together. It's, um, I was in there earlier, and um, boy, did it look wonderful. So that's, that's going to be a, a lot of fun. Oh, would you please register your attendance with us on the blue pads? It's especially important today uh, because... We want to be sure that all of our regular attendees get the chance to fill out an estimate of giving card. And so the folks that couldn't be with us today, we're gonna mail a card to. And the way we'll know who couldn't be with us today is by looking at the attendance registrations and seeing who wasn't here. So if you will be sure to register your attendance, we won't mail you another estimate of giving card. How's that? Sounds good? Uh, gosh, it's good to be with you this morning. Uh, who would you like for us to be remembering in prayer today? On this side, is there anybody? Susan. Susan, thank you. Who else? Yes. Sam and Jenny. Thank you. Who else on this side? My dad. Your dad? Thank you. How about on this side? Anybody? All good over here? Anybody from the choir? Lou Gregory. Lou Gregory. Our country. Our country. Gratitude for veterans. Let's bow in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we're so glad to be in your house, surrounded by truth that's loving. You teach us by modeling it to us a kind of loving graciousness that includes everybody in the circle of life. And so we're glad to be in your house and we give you thanks for including us in your family. We pray that you bless us as we worship. We offer to you our minds, our imaginations, our emotions, and we, we ask that you move across our innermost being, blessing us touching us, renewing us, and inspiring us. And we pray, Lord, for those whose names have been called either on our lips or in our hearts. We ask that you bring your grace, power, and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. The opening hymn is 155, the first, second, and last verses of all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let's stand. <laughs>
to turn into your bulletin to the prayer of confession as we confess our sins to Almighty God. Let us all pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Please continue in silent confession. we beseech thee, absolve thy people from their offenses, that through thy bountiful goodness we may be delivered from the bonds of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to the mission moment. You know, we usually have a, a video for our mission moment, but today... The mission moment is right in front of us. Today we dedicate the Operation Christmas Child boxes that you've made. You know, there are an awful lot of children in the world that this is the only Christmas they're going to get. And it's a love gift from you that causes them to give thanks to Jesus Christ for his love of them through you. So God bless you for doing this. And also, closer to home, uh, there are so many people who live on the Outer Banks that are hungry, that really cannot make ends meet. And you and your generosity do so many things to be a blessing to them, particularly through the Beach Food Pantry. And you've bought uh, Thanksgiving grocery baskets. That sounds better than grocery bags, doesn't it? You brought Thanksgiving grocery baskets, uh, bags, to be given to hungry families on the beach. God bless you for doing that. You know, as the families come to receive these wonderful uh, gifts of food, that it causes them to be grateful to God for his love. You know, sometimes when we're down on our luck, sometimes when things have gone terribly wrong for us, it's easy to feel like maybe God has forgotten us. And when you show love to those in need, it reminds them that God has not forgotten them. It's good to be part of that ministry. So I invite you now just to extend your hands up in this direction as we bless these gifts. Lord Jesus, we, we thank you for your love that lives within your people that causes them to do generous things. Today, spending their time buying trinkets uh, for a, a Christmas box, going to the grocery store and spending time selecting goodies for a Thanksgiving meal. We thank you for your love that dwells so richly in the people called Methodists here at Duck. 
We pray that you bless these gifts, that as they are received by hungry and grateful people, that they will see beyond the box and beyond the bag to your great love that blesses and reaches out to them in grace and in mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for doing this. Uh, if the ushers will come forward, we'll receive the morning tithes and offerings.
trust from you. And in loving obedience, we bring the first tenth to you, asking you to accept these gifts, use them to bring the good news of eternal life to those locally and throughout the world. Bless the gifts and the givers. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to exchange signs of love and peace with one another. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcome to our pulpit today, uh, Tim Russell. I already got to hear his sermon once this morning, and I tell you, I can't wait to hear it again. Uh, Tim is a great preacher, but let me read you the official things about him. Timothy John Russell is a native of Indiana and was reared in Indiana, Iowa, and Florida. He's a graduate of Florida State University and received his MDiv from Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary in 1984. He transferred into the North Carolina Conference in 1988 and was ordained an elder in 1990. He and his wife, Pam, have two grown children. Pam is a native of Raleigh and was reared in Wadesboro. She holds degrees from Wingate University and Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary She's the Director of Children's Ministries at Horn Memorial United Methodist Church in Clayton. Tim has served the following appointments in the North Carolina Annual Conference. Jerusalem Zion from 1986 to 1990. St. Paul Tabor City, 1990 to 94. He was the Associate Pastor at Pine Valley in Wilmington from 94 to 96. Wrightsville Beach, 96 to 2007. And Wilmington DS in 2007. Raleigh District Superintendent, 2008, Interim Rocky Mount District Superintendent, 2010, and since 2008 has served as the Assistant to the Bishop and Director of Ministerial Relations. I think that it is a testament to the esteem 
in which Duck Church is held that uh, Tim Russell is with us today. And uh, it's an honor for us to welcome Tim, and it's a pleasure to have a really good preacher with us. Tim? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. It is a joy to be with you. Uh, as John uh, read that bio, I remember uh, when Bishop Gwynn was here, I served for uh, 11 years at Wrightsville Beach. Uh, and you know from being on the coast what a beautiful place it is and how wonderful uh, life is here. And so I used to tell colleagues, it's a tough appointment, but somebody has to serve it. So here I am, Lord, send me, right? But after doing that for 11 years, then Bishop Gwynn asked me to be the Wilmington District Superintendent. So I was doing that for about six months when the Raleigh DS uh, 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 moved to another appointment, and so he asked me to be the Raleigh District Superintendent. And so I did that for about two months when Paul Leland, his assistant, went and got himself elected bishop. And so then he asked me to be the assistant to the bishop. So in a span of about 12 months, I had like four jobs, and I just said, Bishop, if you don't mind, if you'd put a footnote in the journal so that years from now somebody doesn't look at my pastoral record and say, that boy couldn't hold a job. Uh, so now I'm settled, hopefully, for a little while and have been there since 2008. Um, I'm so delighted that Pam uh, was able to come with me this weekend. This is, as I said earlier, and all of you know, a beautiful part of the state, a beautiful part of the world. We had a beautiful day yesterday and, uh, and uh, time together, and she is uh, the director of children's ministries, so she got a Sunday off today so that she, she's usually working on Sundays, but she came with me. Um, the scripture reading this morning is from 2 Samuel chapter 24. If you have your Bibles, you may follow along with me. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verses 18 through 25. And the prophet Gad came that day to David and said to him, Go up, rear an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Araunah the Jebusite. So David went up at Gad's word as the Lord commanded. Excuse me. And when Araunah looked down, he saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Araunah went forth and bowed down to the king with his face to the ground. And Araunah said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? David said, to buy the threshing floor of you in order to build an altar to the Lord that the plague may be averted from the people. Then Arona said to David, let, the Lord, let my lord the king take and offer up what seems good to him. Here are the oxen for the burnt offering and the threshing sledges and the yokes of the oxen for the wood. All this, O king, Arona gives to the king. And Arona said to the king, the Lord your God accept you. But the king said to Arona, no, but I will buy it of you for a price. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God, which cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord heeded supplications for the land and the plague was averted from Israel. This is the word of God given to us, the people, people of God, Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Bless, O Lord, the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I was going through my email a couple of weeks ago, really received an email that I think will change our lives one of those life-changing moments. I, I hesitate to tell you about it because I don't really want to brag about it. I don't want to make anybody feel bad. We'll try to continue to be our usual humble selves. But it, it turns out there is this widow overseas that has $8 million she has to give away. And of all the people in the world, she chose me to give it to. I just had to give her my bank routing number and my... Um, <laughs> passport number and my driver's license number and my firstborn child but other than that we've hit it big we're just waiting we're waiting for the money to come in you've got those uh those emails before i assume in the old days we used to get solicitations in the mailbox didn't we you'd go out to the mailbox just a boring regular day and you'd, you'd open the mail and it'd be you've won a million dollars and your palms would start getting sweaty and you your head would start throbbing. You think, what am I going to do with them? And then you see the, the little fine print if you hold the winning number. There's always an if, isn't there? There's always small print, isn't there? 
which is why we say to our children and grandchildren we've said all of our lives you can't get something for nothing there's always a catch isn't there you can't get something for nothing but sometimes sometimes we can get something for nothing Sometimes things come to us not because we've earned them, not because we've worked for them, but simply as a gift to us. For instance, our families. I was blessed to have a wonderful father. My father has passed several years ago. My mother is still living, just visited her last week in Florida. She'll be 90 next April. My mother and father were a wonderful gift in my life. I didn't choose them. I didn't look at a bunch of prospective parents and said, I'll take her and I'll take him. You don't get to do it that way, do you? It's just, it's just a gift. Our families come to us as a gift. Now, sometimes in a couple of weeks when we gather for Thanksgiving and we have some people around that table, we'll think it's a gag gift, right? <laughs> but, but usually it's a gift. It's a wonderful gift. Um, the freedoms we enjoy. Somebody mentioned Veterans Day. The freedoms we enjoy as a nation, we didn't really earn um, those of us who served in the armed forces, we're grateful for, for your service. We're grateful for that. But, but we weren't there uh, all those years ago when we decided to rise up against the British. We weren't part of that. The freedoms we enjoy as a nation have been handed down from person to person, and we receive them as a gift. Hopefully we're grateful. We offer our thanks. But it's something that came to us as a gift. It's something we got, in a sense, for nothing. Duck United Methodist Church, this beautiful building, this beautiful property, this beautiful setting, all of the, the things that you enjoy about this congregation, about worship in this place, we didn't start it. We weren't the first people that ever came to this place and said, hey, I think we'll start a Methodist church here. Our ancestors did. Some of you may be related to those people. Some of you have no relation to them at all. But we received Duck United Methodist Church and all of the activities, its worship, what it's meant to us as a community of faith, and how it's surrounded us in those important moments of our lives. We receive that as a gift. The larger Christian faith we receive as a gift. Think about all of the people who, who made a difference in your life and in your walk of faith. You are here this morning because people... Uh, 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 taught Sunday school because they kept the nursery when you were little because they were uh, youth volunteers because they were preachers because all of the people who made an impact in your journey of faith think about all of those people some of whom uh, have outraced us to the father's house but many of whom left footprints in our hearts and an imprint in our hearts and we receive that gift of faith as a gift didn't we turns out there are some things you can get for nothing turns out there are some things that come to us as a gift sometimes sometimes we're proud of it sometimes we're we're proud of receiving something for nothing sometimes we're proud of getting a good bargain if you came up to me and you said to me you know i really like that suit well thank you very much i appreciate that the first thing i'd say is you know i got it on sale God, Belk was doing one of those things. They were giving stuff away. I mean, those red dots. I don't, I don't shop anything but those red dots. You know, those red dots. And you, now, you might look at my suit and say, yeah, I can tell that. But, but nonetheless, be kind, be kind. And so, yeah, this thing was, it was listed at $600. $600. I paid $100 for it. $100 for it. Yeah, that's all I paid. If you saw my new car, I don't have one. But if I had a new car out in the parking lot, drove up, and you said, boy, that's a nice car. And I said to you, well, I got a great deal on it. You got a great deal? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They listed it at 40000 got it for 25000 25000 You're kidding me. And here's the thing about that. We're not ashamed of it, are we? When we get those kind of deals, we don't hang our head in shame. I don't say to you, well, I only paid $100 for it. Well, I don't say to you, well, they wanted 40000 but I said, could you please take twenty-five? I only have twenty-five. I don't really have forty. Would you take twenty? No. We're proud of striking a great bargain. We're proud of getting a good deal. We like to feel like we got something for nothing, like we got a great deal. That's the only thing. That's the only thing that explains why when you go to a baseball game, grown adults will knock over small children and little old ladies to get one of those baseballs, right? Or when they do the, the, the T-shirt thing and they shoot it up into the green. You don't need it. Why, who needs another T-shirt? But you'll knock people over to get it. Why? Because it's free. You didn't pay anything for it. You want to say to those grown adults, what are you going to do with a baseball? You just took it out of a five-year-old child's hand. What are you going to do with it? It's free. I got it for nothing. When our children were little, 
we went to whatever the latest Disney movie was. This has been 15 or 20 years ago. And so we go to the latest Disney movie, and we're sitting there in the theater. They're little, and, and the, the, before the movie, they, they had DJs come out from a local radio station, and they were doing Disney trivia. And the crowd really wasn't into it. And so they had T-shirts, and they had koozies, and they had keychains, and all kinds of things. We didn't even listen to the station. And, but it was stuff like... Uh, the name of the little mermaid. Well, even I know that. The name of the little... And people would just... So finally I said, Ariel! Whew, they threw me something. I'm telling you, we walked out of there with bags of stuff, free stuff, keychains. We have enough keychains to last us the rest of our lives. Why? Who needs another key? Didn't matter. It was free. We were excited to get a bunch of free stuff. Plus, we got the benefit of humiliating our children. It was like, it was like this is better than the movie itself. We embarrassed our children and we got free stuff. Everybody... Everybody likes to feel like they got a good deal. Everybody likes to feel like they got something for nothing. Except, there are times in our lives when the occasion is so important and the recipient of the gift is so close to our hearts that the idea isn't how little we have to give but how much we have to give. young man and young woman are madly in love the birds sing sweeter the sky is bluer the uh, air is fresher because they found each other all is right with the world and he decides to ask her to marry him and so he gets a ring gets the box they go out to dinner maybe they're walking on the beach and he does gets on his knee opens the box she cries he puts the ring on her finger now I, I don't claim to be an expert in this i don't claim to be an expert but i would suggest the next words out of his mouth should not be you won't believe the deal i got on that thing <laughs> you will not believe it. i got that for a hundred bucks no, I was just walking down the road, and this guy said, Psst, hey, come here. And I followed him down a couple alleyways, and he had his trunk open. He's selling diamond rings out of his trunk, $100. Well, now, wait a minute. I thought everybody liked a bargain. I thought everybody liked a great deal. Well, we do, don't we? And there are times when it's perfectly appropriate, and we appreciate that, and we're proud of it. But there are times when it isn't how little we have to give to get by. There are times when actually the occasion is so important that it actually should cost us something. I would recommend every once in a while, for no reason at all, no occasion, no birthday, no special holiday, you just buy your beloved flowers it's not a bad idea at all. But if you do that, please don't go to the florist or the floor place, the, the flower place at the grocery store and say, Psst, you got anything? You got a good deal? You got anything 75% off? Because you know what they're going to bring you. They're going to bring you something that's droopy and it's brown and it's wilty. And again, if you show up at home and say, honey, I'm home, that's not going to go well. They're all droopy and look what I got you. And I got a great deal. I bet you did. Yeah, I bet you got a great deal on that. They make you pay for it? I mean, did they, they pay you to take them? Why? I thought everybody liked a great deal. Because the whole point of flowers, the whole point of flowers is it's an extravagance. Of course, they'll be dead in a couple of days. That's the whole point. The point is they're not going to last long. The point is it's fleeting. The point is it is an extravagance because it's out of the love we have for someone that we give those kinds of gifts. King David knew that. The story in our scripture today is a plague has descended upon Israel. More than 70,000 people have died. And the prophet Gad comes to David and he says, uh, you need to build an altar and offer a burnt sacrifice to God to ask his mercy and ask him to take the plague away. And he, not only that, but he said, I've got a specific place. You need to go to Arona, who was not a Jewish person, it was a Jebusite, a, a foreigner. And you need to say to Arona, I need to buy this land so that I can erect an altar. And it is, uh, legend says, that is where Solomon's temple was eventually built, on that site, the holiest place in all of Israel. So David does that. David, well, around it sees him uh, uh, coming. And, he, and he, he sees the king coming, and he bows down. He gives proper uh, 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 obedience to the king. And then he says, uh, the king says what he wants. And he says to him, uh, I tell you what, I'll give it to you. 
I'll just give it, not only, I won't only, I, not only will I give you the land, I'll give you the oxen for the burnt offering, and I'll give you the wood to start the fire. I'll give you the, thresh, the, the yokes and the threshing sledges, and that'll be the, all the wood you need. And David says what? David says, that's great, that's a great deal. I got something for nothing, everybody. No, David says no. David says no? Can you imagine the next board of trustees meeting when he tried to explain that? You mean the guy was willing to give it to you? He was going to give you the land and you said no? I said no. And then David offers one of the best um, definitions, if not the best, definition of stewardship in all of Scripture. He says, I will not offer to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. There are times when it's perfectly appropriate to get a good deal. We can be proud of it. We can brag about it. But there are times when the occasion is so important and the recipient is so close to our hearts that actually what we want to brag about is what it cost us, not what it didn't cost us. Today is Consecration Sunday at Duck United Methodist Church. As the ushers uh, pass out the uh, estimate of giving cards, you'll forgive me, I put this in my pocket. Yours won't be crumpled up like this. I apologize for that, but they'll pass them out. I invite you to give generously out of generous hearts and give generously. And we're not embarrassed to ask that because we believe that the ministries of Duck United Methodist Church make a difference not just here in this part of North Carolina, but really around the world. There are children in Methodist children's homes who are being ministered to because of our generosity. There are, are, are um, senior adults in Methodist retirement homes because of our generosity. There are people who are being fed. There are churches that are being started. There are new faith communities that are springing up because of our generosity and because we've chosen to be generous. I was serving at Wrightsville Beach when one day a young woman came. She knocked on my office door and she said, do you have a moment? I confess to you, this is a confession, and she's heard me confess this. Um, I was busy, I was getting ready for charge conference. You've got charge conference coming up, don't you? Yeah. I was getting ready for charge conference, all those things. There was a part of me that thought, I don't have a moment. Do I look like I'm just sitting around twiddling my thumbs? But thank God I didn't say that. I said, sure, I've got a moment. Come on in, come talk. She sat down and she started telling me her story. I, I knew her. We had brought her into our church as an adult. She had not attended church as a child. We baptized her as an adult believer. We led her to Christ and then baptized her as an adult believer. And she said this to me. She said, Tim, I just found out my father in West Virginia has terminal cancer. And uh, the Lord has told me, he's laid on my heart, that I'm to take a leave of absence from my work so I can go care for my father. <clears throat> you know, there was a part of me, this is, this is again, is a confession, so don't do this to people. There was a part of me that wanted to protect her. There was a part of me that wanted to say, in fact, I think I said, no, no, you don't need to do that. No, we can figure something. I said, Tim, you don't understand what I'm saying. She said, I, I, my father was abusive to me in every way. I despised my father growing up. He was abusive emotionally. He was abusive physically. He divorced my mother and left us. She said, but I'm telling you right now, until I received Christ and joined this church, I could never have done this. I would never have done it. The only reason I'm open to doing it now is because of the difference this congregation has made in my life and because of the difference Jesus Christ has made in my life. I, with her permission, I use it today with her permission, with her permission, I used that story in our consecration Sunday that year because I concluded that story by saying this. Any congregation that's producing young people like that is doing something right. You have similar stories in this church. Maybe your own story. You came here from other places. You found a community of faith. You found friends. You've studied scripture. You've grown as a disciple. You've grown in your Christian walk. Our tithes and offerings help support those kinds of ministries so that we can make a difference not just here but around the world. In just a moment, we're going to have a closing hymn. 
And during that closing hymn, I'll ask you to come, and you may pause and say a prayer as well, but I'll ask you to come to the table, the table where we receive the Lord's Supper and where God offers himself to us uh, over and over again. And I'll just ask you to lay your pledge card down right there. Take a couple of minutes to fill it out. Where is God leading you to give? Maybe that you already tithe and God is leading you to step up beyond that. That first box is checked for that. Maybe that you're ready to step up to tithing and there's a box for that. It may be that you're not there yet, but you're willing to, to, to begin that process and begin to give regularly and in a disciplined way, and there's a box for that and then a place for you to put what you'll give in 2017 to help with the ministries of Duck United Methodist Church. One final thing, and then we'll sing our closing hymn. When I served at Wrightsville Beach, we had 10 straight years, was there 11 years, we had 10 straight years of budget surpluses at Wrightsville Beach, totaling about half a million dollars. We built Habitat for Humanity houses because we believed in, in giving to others because God had been so generous to us. When Hurricane Katrina hit uh, Mississippi, the Mississippi Annual Conference, uh, many of those pastors were left without congregations with no way to make a living. We paid for the living expenses of one of their pastors for an entire year. We did those kinds of things, and we were able to do those kinds of things. And what I always say to people is, I rarely talked about money. I never talked about the budget. It doesn't matter what the budget is. God calls us to give so that we can make an investment in other people's lives, so that we can make an eternal difference in people's lives. And I promise you it's one of the best investments we'll ever make. Won't you be generous now? Let's pray together, and then we'll sing. Dear God, we offer ourselves, uh, our gifts, our time, our talents, and yes, a portion of what we earn to you and to your kingdom through the ministries of Duck United Methodist Church. We pray that you help us to give and help us to pledge with generous hearts because we believe what we give here and what we do here makes an eternal difference in people's lives. So bless this time, bless this worship, and bless what we give. Multiply it and use it to make a difference around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand now as we sing together? And you may come forward as we sing together. Our closing hymn is Here I Am, Lord, hymn 593. Would you sing with us?
night for a week. And some of the best food that I see here all year is the food you bring for our homeless brothers and sisters. When you provide uh, for those at the Beach Food Pantry, you provide in such generosity. Duck Church has this wonderful idea that a great way to show our love for God is to show love for our neighbors. You are the best I have ever seen at that. Praise the Lord. Will you extend a hand of, of blessing now as we dedicate these gifts? Oh Lord, we thank you for all the ways that you have blessed us with the very finest. We thank you that you've given us a heart of generosity. And we pray that you bless these promises of giving. And we pray, Lord, as that we give to you, that we will experience in greater abundance your giving to us. We pray that you crown us with life, joy, and peace in new and wonderful ways. And we pray that you open our eyes to see how others are blessed with your eternal work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now in a moment, we're going to the fellowship hall, and you talk talking about finest bread I will provide. I saw what was in there uh, after the first service. It's a really great brunch. We're going to go. We're going to have a great time. If you're a visitor today, we especially want you to join us uh, because it's wonderful to embrace uh, those who share Sunday morning with us that come from all over the nation. So thank you for being with us. Now receive this benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of grace, unto him be honor, glory, dominion, and power, and may the love of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.